From the 1970s, uh, the struggle in South Africa takes on a new form. Uh, even here at UWC in the 1973, 273, there were many uprisings here. Uh, one of the uh, big challenges to the management was there when uh, one of the students refused to wear a tie any longer and was supported by uh, the rest of the um, student body. And uh, a significant victory was won um, with respect to the discipline of the, uh, of the management at that time. 1976, of course, is an iconic uh, month, if, if you'd like, in the history of South Africa. Um, sorry, say 1976 is an, is an iconic year in South Africa's history, and uh, it is the year of Soweto. And Soweto changes everything. Um, I remember it so well. On the 15th of June, there was uh, a, um, a peace and quiet, if you like, at the schools where I, at the, where I was uh, vice principal. And the next day, uh, we found that as a consequence of the Soweto uprising, uh, our student body had become some, something else. They, uh, they began then to express their wish to be free in far more um, deliberate ways, in far more uh, challenging ways. And uh, this was carried on, of course, into the 1980s. Uh, UWC was from the 1970s already in the vanguard. Uh, and towards the end of 1970s, uh, UWC refused uh, to obey the state's uh, uh, injunction that um, those who are not coloured can only come to this university with permits. And UWC's uh, council said, we reject that. Uh, this um, um, revolutionary spirit then uh, uh, comes to its uh, full fruition in the 1980s, uh, when the University of the Western Cape declares itself the intellectual home um, for the left, and it uh, tells the, uh, the world at large that they will fight against the apartheid regime for the freedom of the majority of South Africans uh, academically and politically. So UWC then enters the 1990s uh, um, with the reputation of having been a university that has uh, had an incredible relationship with the broader oppressed community and was prepared to uh, fight for that community in, in, in many different ways and prepare to make sacrifices on behalf of that university, that, on behalf of that, uh, of that community. Uh, and in the community of South Africa, it is recognized as, a, as a, um, an important um, site of struggle and its international reputation uh, um, is, 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 is something similar. So UWC then uh, in 1994 finds itself in a free South Africa. And like all other institutions uh, in different countries at times of transition, you have, uh, you have a complex set of problems to deal with. And UWC had to deal with those uh, a complex set of problems right up into the, into the 2000s. Um, it had to find itself again. It had spent a lot of its, uh, of its energy uh, academically consolidating the, the knowledge base needed uh, to inspire people to struggle, um, but also now it had to, had to, it was also involved in the challenge of breaking down the apartheid regime. Now the challenge was how do you build a new South Africa? Um, we find then that uh, the, in, in analyzing our victory over the apartheid regime, what leaps at us is the role played by the many, many communities in South Africa that had literally gone to war. And we had a, a, a number of forums and a number of uh, organizations and uh, a number of large bodies of, of, of people like the UDF uh, responsible for working on the ground in community and building in those communities a sense of anger, a sense of uh, freedom and a sense of the, how they might together overthrow the apartheid regime. So one can say from one perspective that the apartheid regime was defeated by the work done by communities in community. And uh, what is our expectation then moving post-1994 with the, and, and our new government, uh, who is the beneficiary, if you like, of the, the activities of all of those communities? Um, our expectation was that we would now use those same communities for the new struggle. 
the, the new revolution, the revolution of, uh, of um, finding your way into the world, uh, the revolution of developing a, a democracy, and the revolution of dealing with the savage legacy of apartheid, the poverty, the, the, gangst, uh, the gangsterism that had uh, uh, arisen in, in many of our, of our communities. And so we are anxious and, and we are waiting for the, the signal to begin to participate in this new frame. The Constitution gives us some understanding of what that frame ought to be, but that's as far as it goes. In fact, what happens is that community organizations are discouraged from existing as they to be, we're looking to develop the, um, the authority of the center. And the center, of course, would be the, our, our government. And so we find that instead of our using all of those uh, community organizations that had done such amazing things in struggle, uh, we left all of the, uh, of the works to the, the politicians and the civil servants. And so, in a sense, from 1994 up, I believe, up until today, we have not recaptured the, uh, the spirit in community uh, to, to, to build that community in the interest of the, of the development of a new South Africa, a prosperous South Africa, a viable South Africa. Uh, but in fact, we have left that up to government. The uh, part of the, 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 the um, promises made by government in 1994 and the years soon after that, um, we later found could not be sustained. Uh, but, and, and that we would have to pass on to the communities far greater responsibilities for their own development. But this has never been articulated in a way which has brought to the community a sense that it no longer can depend on government for everything it needs, but it must, again, in the spirit of the 1970s and the 1980s, give all of their energy, all of their strength, all of their wisdom, um, all of their, their, their sense of purpose to building strong communities that take care of large numbers of the community challenges with the help of government, rather than uh, expecting government to uh, do this for us and waiting for government to do this, despite the fact that we now begin to understand that our government does not have the resources needed for everyone's uh, wishes to be, to be granted. So this is where we again uh, come to the question of community and community development and community engagement. What then is the role of the university with respect to that? Well, as, soon, as early as 1997, uh, our government began to get a sense that uh, it would need a closer relationship with, you know, with, with, uh, with communities, uh, not yet giving communities the responsibility for itself, but, uh, but asking more of it. And it requests then that universities play a special role with respect to this. And I read to you a short excerpt from the, uh, from the white paper of uh, 1997. It says the following. Um, it makes spe a specific reference to the role that community engagement can play in transforming the higher education system. And it speaks to the national goals and gives to community engagement a central role in the life of, a uni of the universities. So it says to the universities, uh, we want you to assist us with uh, having uh, communities take more responsibility for, for what they are doing. Um, the universities found themselves in a, in a bit of a, a difficulty with this third element of their mandate. The first element, of course, was the element of, the, uh, of teaching and learning. The second element is the element of um, research. And the third element then, um, and, and in the white paper, expressed as an important element, is now the element of uh, community engagement. So how do universities think about this? Where does it place community engagement in the hierarchy of its mandates. And uh, my own perspective on this is very clear. Its greatest um, contribution to the community development uh, is for us to, at the University of the Western Cape, produce excellent students. People who come here, who are able to, uh, through their energy and their, and their, and their, their sense of purpose uh, and, and their goals, uh, uh, put all of the energy behind the, uh, the development of the themselves and uh, their, their cohorts of, 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 uh, of uh, brother and sister students so that we can provide for South Africa the brain power that it needs in order to make its way. 
And I consider that to be the most important function of this university. It's one that we, or do we to take very, very seriously uh, at the University of the Western Cape. The second function, most important function, is the research function. Because we are now in, an, a, in, a, in a time when there is such change everywhere that it is almost impossible to imagine that you already have the answers to that change um, and, uh, and that the past as it gives you, the, your past knowledge gives you the, uh, the uh, answers to, the, uh, to the, the challenges that are facing you. So we, we, we must then accept that without new knowledge, we South Africans will not make a good go of it. And so our responsibility is as quickly as possible, and given the fact that we now have access to things digital, uh, we should be trolling this world to try to bring into South Africa as much of the new knowledge necessary uh, for it to, to, uh, to, to support itself in this, in this very, very complex environment. And the third one, the one that, that does worry universities a little bit, and some have even said it ought not to be a mandate for universities, is the, uh, the mandate of, of uh, community engagement. My own view on this is that it takes two forms. Uh, the one is that it's, um, it's, it acts as a, an organ that services the community. We now have the uh, situation where we have uh, large numbers of UWC students going to Theobatuskloof and engaging there with the, uh, with the uh, uh, community, especially the, uh, the elderly. But, but this takes the form of service. And uh, you retire from this and others go in and they give the service. It is welcome and it, uh, it's, uh, it's hugely beneficial. But it doesn't speak to the culture of the, of the, of the community. It doesn't speak to where the community sits relative to itself and its determination to engage with itself and the world in order to be able to uh, assist South Africa uh, to develop. This comprehensive service that we give to the communities of, of the Western Cape is lauded in every possible way. And we have a, a wonderful um, um, publication here that gives you a sense of the the, 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 the number of such, such engagements and the, the range of such engagement and the depth of such engagements. And so we can be very, very proud at the University of the Western Cape for what our students and staff are doing in community. Um, I uh, think that it contributes greatly to the development of a sense of community. But a part that we are, should be now getting into, I believe, is also the engagement with community about itself and its own development. And this is, uh, uh, I think, a, a, a challenge for us as a university and one that uh, I believe uh, is going to occupy our minds and our, our, um, our competences to, to, to a great extent in the, in the next 10, 15 years. But without our developing in our communities a sense of, of fierce independence while being part of the whole. Um, I believe that uh, we are going to be stuck with these service delivery marches consistently for, for th um, perhaps 10, 20, 30 years. The reason for my saying that is that, and the only way is to raise the living standards of, the, of South Africans is through what South Africans themselves do. And 80% of our South Africans, uh, um, one can say, do not have the wherewithal, they don't have the money to be able to utilize that money in order to, to uh, renovate, if you like, or reconstruct the, uh, the community. And so if they leave that only up to government, it can't work because government doesn't have the resources to accomplish this. And so when, it's, it's when the community turns to, to itself and says, what will we do to make things better here? And how will we organize ourselves to make things better here? And how will we engage with government for the support for us as we endeavor to make things better here? How do we understand that in order for our development to be rapid, uh, we have to increase the size of our economy quite dramatically? And how does one do that? Uh, um, there are examples all over the world about how this is possible. But at the heart of all of this is education. Um, education both in the school system, education in the universities, education in the other forms of, uh, of um, um, learning, like the technicons and the, and the technical colleges. But what we need is a, a, a country of people who understand this, who understand the connection between education, uh, ownership, hard work, and the good future. And so begin the discourse in community 
uh, hopefully with the help of universities where people have been studying these matters for a long, long time, to engage with universities, not to leave a service, but to engage as a, as a partner in building a new consciousness in that community about itself and the ways in which it supports South Africa's development. And so uh, uh, my uh, wish, my, my hope is that this will be so. There are signs of it already um, at, the, at the University of the Western Cape. We have a program here where we are working with uh, principals and we are of schools and we are giving back to principals of the, of the schools, I, I hope, a sense of, of purpose. Uh, we're giving back to them a sense of, of respect. We're giving back to them a sense of how significant and important they are for the development of their schools and in community. And we are hoping to be, have them as a, as a cohort um, go out into, the, uh, into their communities and use the new knowledge that they have and the, and the new understanding of what the challenges really are to, to um, uh, assist in the communities creating the kinds of fora that are necessary if we are as a community to work together uh, to, um, to, to uh, build our country. I was fortunate enough for eight years of my life to be the chairperson of the, uh, of the Strand Community Forum. And it was really an exercise in democracy. It was a forum of not individuals, but of um, uh, organizations in the community. And uh, so that the, the, each organization was asked to send its delegates, properly mandated by that organization, to participate in, uh, in the discourse about the, the Strand at that time, its past and, uh, and the, 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 the wounds we carried from the past, and uh, it is present, and uh, the battle we were then fighting for our, for our freedom, and then the future. How do we project this into the future? It was a wonderful, wonderful engagement with these 37 organizations coming together once a month to speak about this, to make decisions about it, to ask the questions about what can we do about this ourselves, and how do we then mobilize ourselves to be able to do this. And so this is what I hope will be, it will characterize the relationship between the University of the Western Cape and our, our, our communities, with large numbers of our students going into those communities to model for those communities what is possible when a, an institution like the University of the Western Cape sends its best and brightest and most committed students to them to work with them, to, to, to provide a service for them, hopefully also to engage in the, in the developmental aspect of it. But for the university also with its, and its academic uh, life, um, becoming a source of, of wisdom and, and experience uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, the community leaders so that they may begin to construct the kinds of communities that understand the danger South Africa is, South Africa is in at the moment with respect to its future and how important it is for communities to take full responsibility of that future and what the mechanisms are by which you can bring together leaders in community and have those leaders begin to develop a discourse in the, uh, uh, in the community about the most important challenges facing South Africa. We must hope also that the national plan, the strategic plan, then becomes something that we use as a framework for what South Africa is hoping to become. To date, we have not seen the national plan being vigorously engaged with in schools, for instance, uh, in communities, uh, in churches. Uh, it's something that was created by, uh, by the state in uh, collaboration with, with, uh, with people, community leaders. But now that it is there and uh, it has uh, uh, and understood what its challenges might be, uh, its, its biggest challenge is how do you get South Africans to engage with this? to believe that this is important, to take ownership of the future of our country, uh, uh, shaped in some respects by that, by that policy, uh, to commit their energy and their, and their time and their effort to this uh, uh, issue of the development of, of, our, of our country, and how do we develop the competences as a nation which we must have, which we absolutely must have, if we have, are to have any chance of uh, surviving uh, the, the, the horrific changes coming our way in the 21st century. So um, we are proud of our department uh, that is responsible for uh, community uh, engagement and the Priscilla Daniels, they've done an amazing job. We've also gone beyond the publication. We have now created a database uh, which will capture for us all the activity on our campus as it relates to uh, 
uh, to community engagement and hopefully now more and more to community development. And uh, that, uh, that uh, database allows us to get a, a, an, a helicopter view of this university and its relationship to its uh, communities, uh, to, to be surprised by what others are doing in your, in, in your field and how if you t uh, were to work, to work together in a multidisciplinary way, you could perhaps do far, far greater uh, work in a, in a much, much shorter time than is currently uh, possible. Um, we are in a university with a, a great sense of, uh, of um, responsibility. We took responsibility bravely um, when we challenged the apartheid government so that we might be free. Now we've got to, we've got to take on this new challenge.